All right. Good morning, everybody. This is Jason Reynolds with the Real Estate Now podcast, and I've got the one, the only, Art Brooks with State Farm here in Burleson. How are you, Art? Good. Good. Thank you. Got my cup of coffee? We're ready to go. Ready to go. Yeah. (laughs) As long as we don't have to sing karaoke. Well, we do, actually. I was lying. We're going to sing at the end. (laughs) Hey, Cassie. Okay, so we've been doing the Real Estate Now podcast. We're doing it in the car now, recording some video. And uh, Art is with State Farm, which is an insurance company in town. So I'm going to give some highlights about Art real quick. And then we're going to kind of take it off with some questions. So Art, if I'm right, you've been an insurance agent since 1980? With State Farm since 1980. Actually, since 1978. Okay. Insurance agent. Who were you with before? Uh, Equitable Life. Uh, They still around? Uh, Equitable Life's still around. Uh, I'm not around anymore with Equitable Life. (laughs) How old were you when you jumped into the insurance business? 22. 22? Yeah. Now, what made you get into the insurance business? Started with State Farm when I was 24. Okay. You know, so. What made me get in insurance? uh, A job posting at UTA on the bulletin board. Okay. So. uh, Simple as that. Yeah. 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 Okay. They're the only people that would hire me. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you applied know. for 30 other jobs. They'd hire anybody. <laughs> you can knock on doors and talk. <laughs> They'd hire you. Oh, my gosh. You know, I sold all my family and friends and didn't have anybody else to sell. So, so yeah. yeah okay. They got out of it. <laughs> got a state farm. Everybody needs car insurance. Okay. So another interesting fact about Art Brooks. He is mm-hmm. a Rotary Paul Harris Fellow yes, sir. three times. Yeah. So what does that mean to be a Paul Harris Fellow? That just means that you've uh, donated money to okay. the Rotary Foundation. Okay. Uh, and they recognize you with a little medallion and call you a Paul Harris, Paul Harris Fellow. Okay. All right. So, okay. simple as that. All right. You got money. You can, you can be one. You can be one yourself. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, Art has also, in 2015, although he doesn't remember... He uh, was the Burleson Chamber of Commerce Citizen of the Year. I am in the 60s now, so <laughs> I don't remember real well. Do you know where we're at? Yeah. We're My wife can remember the first time she ever got mad at me, <laughs> you know, which we've been married 40 years now, or will be in May 20th, so. Okay. Uh, Whoop. She had a great memory, and, you know, I'm just the opposite. I, I, I like to forget. Yeah. <laughs> But anyway, go ahead. All right, all right. I'm I'm Next, now you're good. Next interesting fact: you ran the 2016 Dallas Marathon. Well, if you want to call it running, you know, <laughs> it felt like running. It looked like walking. You know, but yes. So, did you say you you beat Mayor Kinchetta or no? Ken Ken uh, uh, or, or, ran a marathon this year, and uh, he beat me by about 10 minutes. But he's got 20 years on me, so. You would think. So if you were to amortize see, that, you let's would, see him be 60 years old and, and beat, beat you. my time. Right? All right. right. Okay. Right. So you're challenging Kinchetta right now. Absolutely. Okay. And anybody else <laughs> that's 60 years old uh, with three knee surgeries <laughs> and flat feet. You know, All right. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's see you beat my time. <laughs> okay. Okay. All, All right. right. In fact, I beat your time. Yeah, because yeah, I haven't run one. Right. Right. Which is what I tell 90 percent of the people I meet. You know. All right, this podcast is done. It's been great, Art. (laughs) Okay, so let's, I want to learn a little bit about Art. So how long have you been married? You got some kids, grandkids? 40 years old. I got two daughters, uh, four granddaughters. All right. You know, uh, surrounded by women in my life, but that's okay. I like women, so I've got a lot of them. Yeah. You know, between the, the, the wife and two daughters and four granddaughters. You've, yeah, I, uh, one of my daughters is an attorney in Fort Worth, Rachel, my okay. oldest, and my other daughter Rebecca is a State Farm agent in Lockhart, hey, the you barbecue got capital of Texas. Gary Lewis just said, "Love you, Art." Well, <laughs> that's a strong word, Gary, but <laughs> like you too. <laughs> oh man! So, any interesting talents aside from running with knee surgeries at six? Well, that's old? not much of a talent. <laughs> it's not interesting either, but. Uh, I've decided I've started to learn how to play the guitar. And, yeah, uh, I've seen you play that. Me and a um, couple of friends from church. Uh, uh, we got a couple guys that are pretty good, and the rest of us are pretty bad. But uh, they've helped us uh, learn how to play, and we go to different nursing homes and church events and okay. uh, and uh, entertain the old folks, which is really good because none of them can hear anyway. So, 
So do you? you know, play, they don't know if we're any good or not. Do you play the good old tunes from from the fifties that you love we, and enjoy? We play mainly the the um, old church tunes, okay, and stuff. You know, uh, uh, praise and worship type songs. Okay, uh, awesome. Most of them recognize. Okay, you know. Okay. So then, I wanted to ask you. I saw a picture on Facebook. Oh, you talking about your uh, your car that you sold in 1980? It looked like a Corvette. 1969 Corvette convertible, yes. Okay, so you sold that to start your business. Is that right? To help start my business, yes. It, okay. It, it was a piece of it. You know, uh, and it wasn't a very reliable work car, so I'm, <laughs> uh, you know, because it did break down a lot. So <laughs> Really? Uh, I traded it in and got a 1978 Mazda GLC. Okay. Uh, which is a little bitty uh, car back then, but it's very economical and it yeah. was new, so... It worked, you know. It worked, and I could get around. So, what's the favorite car? Favorite, most favorite car you've ever owned? Probably my uh, 1952 um, MG replica kit car that I built in my garage. When? Uh, back in about 1980, 81. Okay. You know, uh, still have it? Oh no. Okay. Yeah. Well, I wish I did, but no, not anymore. No, I had had to sell it too. <laughs> Can't pay some more bills. <laughs> <laughs> no. My wife and I didn't have uh, meat in our spaghetti until after about five years in the business. Okay, you gotcha. Know, just uh, tomato sauce and spaghetti noodles, you know. Uh, takes a while. All right. No. Okay. Just like any business. Yep. Yep. So what's the favorite, most favorite car you've ever insured? Uh, probably the one that uh, has the most premium volume attached to it. <laughs> you know, we do get paid on commission. So, you know, the, the higher the premium volume, the more I love that car. <laughs> right, okay. You know, you know, uh, so what, what's the most exotic car you think you've ever insured? Probably a 1952 replica MG <laughs> kit car. Your own car. Yeah. <laughs> so what you're saying is you need a few Lamborghinis, Ferraris in your inventory? Yeah, there's not a whole lot of that in Burleson, Texas or the surrounding area. You know, it's not Hollywood or, or even Colleyville, South Lake. Right, yeah. Uh, we're a little far away. And and the people that, that do have wealth and money uh, typically don't flaunt it with a with a high dollar sports car yeah you know the average millionaire drives a ford f-150 pickup truck yeah okay you know, so yeah okay uh, so that's an interesting car there i know our guys can't see it on tv yeah but, it's uh, uh you know uh, yeah <laughs> anyway <laughs> we'll, we'll go somewhere else we'll, we'll leave that for uh, not to be on camera so okay so let's jump into the insurance side so you guys know art. How would we want to do that? Well, you know, I don't know. Okay. You you work in insurance, I guess. Okay. So uh, you know, I've got a few questions we talked about. So when Art and I were talking, we figured maybe give like a live example. So would you recommend to get homeowners insurance? Although you're required if you get a loan, but would you recommend it anyways? Well, you know, <laughs> typically a home is the the most valuable uh, asset that. Uh, uh, a typical person owns so uh, yes uh, I highly recommend getting something to protect the most important investment you have in your portfolio uh, if it's possible yeah you know uh, so can you kind of give you know I've got questions about deductibles and things like that but rather than going into just random questions can you give an example of say you know a client that you had maybe their home burned down a total loss and mm -hmm. what that process was like for them in terms of, you know, what, you know, as soon as it happened for them, they call you and say, Art, my house is burned down. What does and that we, look like? And we did have a total loss this year uh, already. Uh, in our book of business, um, uh, we probably have one or two total losses a year. Okay. You know, in our book of business. Uh, per agency? And, yeah, for my agency. Gotcha. Ties, uh, uh, it is a very traumatic experience. And, yeah, and I was, if I'm able to, I like to to visit with the homeowner uh, while the fire department's still there, and and um, uh, give them a little comfort and and let them know what's covered and what's not covered, and right. And State Farm allows us to uh, hand them a little check at the time to help uh, with additional living expenses, so that you know a lot of times, you know, they like in this instance. Uh, they weren't even able to leave with uh, any clothes or wow. furniture or anything, okay. you know. So uh, they need a little money to 
go to Target or Walmart and buy some T-shirts and underwear and blue jeans and right. some shoes, you know, uh, uh, until we can get the claim actually settled. Uh, said a little extra money uh, comes in handy at that at that time. Okay. Uh, so yeah, uh, definitely recommend getting homeowners insurance. And most homeowner policies do have uh, additional living expense coverage. Okay. Uh, uh, on them. Uh, so now not most insurance agents are able to go visit you at the side of your your right. loss and i'm not always able to myself but you do uh, when you can but when i can i will absolutely so then in, in that kind of scenario you know you have a deductible that has to be paid <clears throat> now when they're processing that claim how long does it take for that for state farm usually to process that and then also, is that deductible that they would be due, does it just come out of that check or are they due to come out of that themselves? Well, um, depending, every claim is different, but okay. uh, uh, in the event of um, a total loss, uh, the house is on the ground, uh, uh, it didn't take long to uh, give them some money and settle the claim, but it, the final claim is really not settled until the house is built. Okay. Because, uh, uh, we don't know exactly what it's going to cost and to rebuild until the final it. nail is nailed and the right. paint <clears throat> is on the house and, right. and all that. So you know, the adjuster can come up with an estimate and offer that to you, uh, but there'll be supplemental checks probably come in as you get the house repaired okay. and work with the contractors <clears throat> and, and all that. So in that kind of situation, say you've lost jewelry, you've lost your electronics, you've lost a lot of items. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, and, me working with you, I know you've recommended like keeping an inventory of what you have in your home. Absolutely. Is that, is that very important when it comes to the claims process? Well, again, it depends on what you have in your house. Uh, you know, if you've got some, uh, what I would call hard to adjust items, uh, some collectibles and paintings and, uh, antique furniture and things that are a little out of the ordinary, then it certainly helps to video document, uh, okay. those items so that, and keep that somewhere safe where it's not going to burn up. Right. Uh, either on the cloud or in safe or safe. What's a cloud? Box. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, for you, you know, get a little CD okay. and record it on the pictures. On well, what's the a CD? Shift shift. Okay. <laughs> uh, so that documentation certainly helps, uh, the adjuster to be able to look at that item and, and, and see it, see it, okay. where you can explain the value of it and why it's worth more than a typical dining room table, right? Or, okay, or something. Uh, now it's not required, uh, but it does help um, everybody in settling the claim. You know, so that you're happy with the amount of money you get, because uh, most insurance companies want to pay every single, not just State Farm, but most insurance companies really want to pay every penny they owe. But at the same time, they don't want to pay any more than they owe. Right. You know, and so the claims adjuster's, you know, job, whether it's, again, State Farm or any other insurance company, um, is to make sure they're fair with the customer, but then also fair to their employer that they're not overpaying. Right. You know, for things that they shouldn't have to. That makes sense. Uh, because you want to stay competitive in the marketplace, but at the same time, you want to have a good reputation of paying what you owe. Right. You know, so... Sometimes it's a dance. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah, I'm working it out. Um, so then, <clears throat> one question that was on there was, you know, if you have, say, jewelry or something, you know, more expensive, you can get, actually get a jewelry policy. But is that, if you didn't have that and you had jewelry in your home and it was destroyed, is there a certain level of it that's covered under some policies? Or, you know, what do you, when do you recommend getting maybe yeah. a jewelry policy? Great question. There is a, there are limitations under mo almost all standard homeowner policies for, uh, cash, uh, guns, uh, jewelry, uh, <clears throat> things like that. But usually the limitation is based on theft, uh, not with fire. Okay. Okay. Uh, so if you did have, say, a gun collection, uh, typically you're going to have $2,500 worth of coverage for theft for guns. Um, so if you desire more coverage than that, then yes, you need to get a separate policy and and uh, get each gun individually insured. And now that would be covered under <clears throat> something under, other than theft as well, though? Like yeah, yeah. I and mean, once you get a separate uh, policy, it's it's covered for all risks of accidental loss. 
including uh, mysterious disappearance, uh, breakage. I mean, if you just drop the gun on the floor and broke it, broke. it in half. Okay. Uh, and same with jewelry is very important. Uh, a lot of times somebody will have a, a diamond ring with 10 stones in it, uh, and they look down one day and one of those stones is missing. Okay. Well, under a homeowner's policy, that's not covered at all. Right. But if you have a separate uh, personal articles folder policy that covers <clears throat> mysterious disappearance, uh, then yeah, that individual stone might actually or would be covered. Okay. You know. Uh, now, <clears throat> you have a total loss. Mm -hmm. You know, say you have a total loss. Does that, you know, is that the same as like vehicle insurance to where if I'm driving and I get in a wreck and it's my fault, then my premium might go up because I'm higher risk. Uh -huh. Now, if there was a total loss that's not due to the client, obviously like a fire or a storm, does that affect their premium in the future? Well, fires are oftentimes the, due to the insured's fault. Most you of know, the time, you, know, okay. you left the pan on the oven and, you know, uh, or you did something else to catch your house on fire. Right. Uh, certainly, yeah, a lightning strike uh, would not be your fault, but uh, <clears throat> uh, more often than not, it's, uh, it is your fault. Uh, now, are you but still yes, even covered? Still, but it's still covered. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the only time it wouldn't be covered if it's an intentional loss. Okay. Right. Uh, they call that arson. You go to jail. Right. You know. <laughs> you got uh, bigger problems. But accidental loss caused by the insured is is still covered. Okay. Uh, and now your question was, does it make my rate go up? Every every insurance company has a different pricing formula. Uh, some give a great big discount uh, if you've never had a claim in the last five years. Uh, but as soon as you have any kind of claim, regardless of whether it's your fault or not, uh, the rate's going to go way up. Um, other companies, you know, maybe not give you that great of an upfront price, but if you have a claim or two, the price doesn't go up any. Okay. So it's hard hard to speak to that. Right, so but as a general rule, the more claims you have in your claim history, whether it's auto or homeowners, the more you're going to end up paying for that premium. The more at risk you are. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's just... It's all statistics. Uh, 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 every time you have a loss, uh, you're more likely to have another loss. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, and again, that applies even if it's not your fault. Uh, you might have five claims, say, in this car, uh, and they're all rear-end claims, which are none, never your fault. But you've had five of them. So what am I doing to make people rear-end You're rear -end doing me? something to make people <laughs> rear-end you. And, and eventually, that, the statistics anyway will say that you're more likely to have an at-fault accident if you're that kind of if a you're driver. Okay. Uh, and same with, uh, you know, maybe you have a, a, a hail loss, uh, and then you have a vandalism loss, and then you have a rear-end loss. Uh, none of them are your fault. But uh, cumulatively, um, you're going to go on yeah. your insurance record, and it's going to make your rate go up. Uh, okay. You're just a more at risk type of a person. Right. Uh, you know, <laughs> we have, we have clients that uh, customers that uh, been with us for 30 years and haven't had a single claim in the last 10 years, but they put 20,000 miles a year in their car, um, but they haven't had any claims. And then we have others that. Seem like once a year they have something They've going got on. Something happening. Yeah, they have a broken windshield, and then they have a towing claim, and then they somebody rear ends them, and then somebody keyed their car, and, uh, and it's never their fault, you know. Uh, but they're going to end up paying more. Yeah. Okay. Uh, whether they like it or not. Right. I mean, <laughs> it's not just State Farm. It's again, I speak to all insurance companies across the uh, board. The more the more claims you have, the more your company is going to charge you. Okay. You know, uh, and same nowadays is true with credit reporting. Um, almost all companies use some form of credit reporting in coming up with their rate. Really? Uh, okay. And while that may not seem fair uh, to some people uh, because they don't understand the, the reasons behind it, the statistics behind it, but uh, those folks that take better care of their credit tend to take better care of their property and are a little more careful with their driving and their okay. uh, the, the upkeep on their homes uh, and tend to have fewer losses than those people that have low credit scores right okay uh, so it is important to all our listeners out there uh, to keep that in mind uh, yeah, it, your credit definitely will affect your insurance your premium uh, so take care of that financial part of your life as well uh, and you'll end up with a lower insurance premium again it doesn't matter if you're with State Farm or any, uh, any of our uh, worthy competitors yeah. you know it's going to be a uh, 
you can pay a lower rate if you have a great courage core. Okay. okay. So then bringing it more, I guess, at home, a lot of people in this area deal with maybe wind or hail damage on their roofs. Uh -huh. So <clears throat> can you kind of explain people who are maybe thinking about, okay, maybe is it important, number one, to know your deductible? Because one thing I find is a lot of clients don't even know their deductible amount, whether it's one, two, or three percent. Uh -huh. You know, does it go higher than three percent ever? You can uh, you can go as high as five percent, but most mortgage companies won't accept more than a three percent deductible. Okay. okay. If you have a mortgage, right? Uh -huh. And back when I started in 1980, you could have a one hundred dollar deductible, uh, but the average home price was twenty five thousand dollars. Yeah, so you're you know, uh, yeah. And nowadays, uh, almost again, I speak to most insurance companies. Uh, minimum deductible is one percent, uh, right? And that's what we find on ninety percent of the policies out there. You probably have a one percent deductible. So if you live in a two hundred fifty thousand dollar house, you have a twenty five hundred dollar deductible, right? Uh, now, what do you reckon? I mean, so <clears throat> maybe clients that maybe have a higher income can handle a higher deductible if they're lower risk. Or well, they'll have a higher deductible because they've got a bigger house. Yeah. <laughs> so they're going to want the one percent. They got a six hundred thousand dollar house. They got a six thousand dollar deductible. You know. So yeah. Uh, but yeah, we. You know, that's definitely one way of controlling your insurance premium is uh, with uh, with your deductible. You know, you uh, the more you can bite off. Um, and self-insure the lower uh, your premium Yeah, you self-insure the, the small losses and let your insurance company take care of the big losses. Uh, yeah, that can uh, help you with your premium. Okay. Uh, absolutely. And other ways you can lower your premium is, you know, I've, a lot of real estate agents and, and mortgage companies will refer you to a company that's the cheapest uh, price uh, because, first of all, if you're, uh, well, either one, mortgage company or, or real estate agent, uh, the lower you can get that monthly premium down. The lower the monthly payment. The, yeah. Well, the higher, the bigger house you can yeah, right, sell right. and you're on commission. So like I am, so the bigger house you sell, the more money you're going to make. So if you can get them a, a, a cheap insurance policy, um, then maybe they can buy a little bigger house and the mortgage loan officer can uh, give you a little bigger of a loan. Right. Um, if they can get that monthly obligation on the insurance premium down. But what you have to be aware of is a lot of times uh, they'll be selling you a, a the, first of all, there's a reason it's cheaper, right? You know, uh, yeah, there's always uh, a reason. You've got name perils policy versus all risk policy. You got actual cash policies versus replacement cost policies. You got policies out there that depreciate your roof should you have a, a hail claim on it. Uh, and all that, speaks to a lower premium uh, but it also speaks to a lower payout come claim time right you know right uh, and while uh, I'm not speaking about Jason Reynolds but some <laughs> insurance I mean some real estate agents and mortgage brokers really don't care about claim time they care about sale time the, right now yeah. today we yeah. need a monthly premium is a little lower uh, okay. so that I can sell you a bigger loan or whatever uh, now now we can do the same thing with by getting you a, a higher deductible, right? But still have replacement cost coverage and still have uh, uh, all risk coverage. Uh, but in nineteen in two thousand and three, this the state of Texas deregulated the homeowner's policy. You know, prior to that, everybody every insurance company was required to sell the exact same policy form, so we all covered the the same risks and okay. for the same things and everything was replacement cost and, and blah, blah, blah. But in 20, in 2003, when they deregulated the homeowner policies, now companies can sell you all kinds of different policies that may or may not have, not have you covered the way you want to be covered. Okay. Uh, and some companies will, you know, I'll, I'll ask somebody, well, you don't have the same coverage as you do with State Farm. They say, oh yeah, I do. I got 200,000 just like State Farm. Well, it's not the two hundred thousand I'm talking about. I'm talking about you got. Uh, they're going to depreciate your house should it burn to the ground, and we're going to pay replacement costs. Well, you know, and they don't. Uh, the average person who doesn't try to educate themselves either doesn't care uh, because they haven't ever had a claim, so they don't know. Right. Uh, or the other insurance agent hasn't explained it to them because they just want to make a sale. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway. Uh, you can control that price through deductibles, 
usually if you match up auto and home together, you get a, um, a cheaper, a, pri a bigger discount. Uh, you get you a monitored alarm system in your house where in case there's a break-in and you're on vacation, it calls the police. Uh, so they can come out and keep people from camping out in your living room, drinking your beer and eating your pizza, you know, while you're gone for two right. weeks. Um, um, that well, speaks to a lower premium, along with the credit scoring will keep kind of all premium. meshes together. You're right. Now all let right. me ask you a question. Okay. Say that you're, you leave for vacation or you leave to go to work one day and you forget to set your alarm. Okay. Uh, say you're just, you're busy and you forget to set the alarm and that day somebody happens to break in, but you're getting a discount because you have an alarm system. Right. Is there any kind of clause to where because you didn't set it that day, does it affect what no, you receive? No, no, there, there's not. Okay, uh, you know, um, the assumption is that you're going to make every effort to, to use set it. the alarm and use it. But the fact that you didn't and then you got broke in that one time uh, doesn't affect the way the claim is settled or gotcha. anything. Okay. No. No. Good so, question, though. Well, it's something yeah. I've thought about before. Yeah. yeah. Now. Um, I've seen this on our policy, but I'm just more curious about it. Say you have a friend over, or maybe they brought their kid over, and they're playing on your trampoline, and they fall off and break a leg. Mm -hmm. And they come back, and they say, well, you know, they, they fell on your property. Right. What, is, what does that look like for a typical policy maybe you have, or is there, is there coverage for that? You, um, most homeowner policies do have personal liability coverage. Okay. Uh, there are a few companies out there that exclude trampolines liability from trampolines, really? so you okay. have to be careful about that. They won't tell you unless yeah. you ask, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, because they want to sell you a cheaper policy. Uh, but most do, uh, as well as dog bites. Some companies okay. exclude dog bite liability. We okay. don't. Uh, uh, but yeah, uh, if you're considered, uh, if you can be sued in the court of law and found liable for that person being hurt on your property, whether it's a swimming pool accident or a trampoline or a dog bite, uh, then your insurance company will pay up to a specified amount in okay. your policy, okay. which is usually either a hundred thousand up to three hundred thousand, right, uh, uh, for that type of liability. Uh, we recommend that people get what we call a personal liability umbrella policy, which will extend that liability up to a million or even up to five million depending on how much premium you want to pay and how much protection you think you need uh, and that also covers you in the event of car accidents as well uh, some folks don't realize that uh, in your policy um, it says how much the insurance company will pay for in the event that you're in an accident and they think well, if I go out and kill two people and total out four cars I'm not worried about it I've been with X insurance company for 10 years are going to take good care of me. And they probably will up to a certain limit, uh, which could be as low as $30,000, okay. uh, which amounts mm. to, uh, you know, six hours in the emergency room. Right. Uh, you know, <laughs> uh, and, and, or 25000 for property damage. How much is this car worth? Probably between thirty-five and forty. Okay, forty thousand dollar car we're driving right now. Somebody could hit you, total it out, and maybe only have twenty-five thousand dollars worth of coverage because they haven't uh, educated themselves as to how much coverage they have. Right. Uh, they go to in their insurance office and just, hey, I want to get it as cheap as I possibly can. Uh, so that agent sells them the minimum limits of liability required in the state of Texas, which is thirty, sixty, twenty-five. Uh, means $30,000 per bodily injury, no more than 60,000 for everybody hurt in the other car, and no more than 25,000 of property damage. Um, but you can raise that um, uh, all the way up to 250, 500,000 slash 250,000 for property damage, and also add on a personal liability umbrella policy, which will cover you up to a, as high as 5 million if, if you think if you, you need, need that much. Okay. Uh, a lot of uh, high-income people that have a lot to protect, uh, I find, have minimum limits of liability because their insurance agent is just never bothered to tell them that, hey, Jason, you know, if you're in an accident, you know, uh, you can get sued, gonna, and yeah. we're only going to pay twenty-five thousand dollars, you know, and and uh, you know, you make a quarter of a million dollars a year and live in a eight hundred thousand dollar house, and you've got this little tiny bit of protection right under your car insurance, uh, so. That all speaks to um, you need to sit down with your insurance agent, right. whoever that might be. We we ask customers to 
to either come in the office or call us on the phone or let us talk to you about every three years. Okay. Um, and just kind of go over uh, all the discounts you might have available to you. We got low driving discounts. Uh, we're you know, we put a little device in your car and it kind of monitors your driving habits and mileage, which can give you a lower rate. Okay. Uh, and then the, uh, I already talked about the discounts you might get with homeowner's insurance, uh, defensive driving. Uh, we'll give you a little bit of a discount in your auto premium. Uh, if you have youthful operators, you know, good grade reports can give you a discount okay. uh, for your kids. You got kids, yeah. Uh, so we like to review all those potential discounts with people every couple of years and make sure they're taking advantage of all those and they let us know that, yeah, my kid's a A A plus student. A, a plus student, you know, and we get that grade report and we can give you a little bit of a discount. Uh, and we also go over the coverages with them. Do you have those minimum limits of liability? Here's how much it costs to, to go up the next step of liability. Okay. You know, can you <clears throat> afford an extra $5 a month? Right. You know, uh, we can give you a little better coverage. Um, or can you afford an extra $100 a month? We'll give you that $5 million, yeah. okay. you know, or whatever. Yeah. You know, whatever it might be. So whether you're with Allstate or Geico or Farmers or State Farm, uh, uh, do yourself a favor and about every and three learn years, about your policy and you know, see what uh, you need have to a do. sit down conversation with that uh, insurance professional and, and go over your coverages okay. and your discounts and make sure you're properly covered. Ask them, do you have name perils coverage under your homeowners or do you have all risks? Do you have, um, is anything depreciated or is it all replacement costs? Right. Uh, and if you have those uh, cheaper policies, can you, uh, how much more would it cost to upgrade it? Upgrade it. And then, you know, if you still want to have the cheaper policy, that's fine. But educate yourself, see what it costs to to get a better policy, and then make that decision. Right. Do I want to pay an extra X a year, or am I happy, you know, paying lower and right. just not getting as good a coverage? Okay. Uh, but, again, making an educated decision, not just... Keeping your you eyes know, shut and... You know, because the, the mortgage company got. guy said, get this policy because it's cheap... <clears throat> Uh, and it might be very cheap, uh, but there's usually a reason for it. So, you know, call that insurance agent up um, and review the coverage okay. and find out why it's so cheap. And, and that's okay. You know, close the loan with a cheap policy and then upgrade it. Yeah. You know, you yeah. got the loan now. Yeah. yeah they so can't take it away from yeah. you. <laughs> you know? Okay. And same with the real estate agent. You know, <laughs> you've qualified for a little bigger house. Right. Uh, now, but now, you got the, now you got the loan. Now do something with the insurance later. Maybe make after sure the fact. Yeah. You know, okay. Make sure you're covered right. Okay. One question we had, because I, I mentioned on Facebook I was going to interview you this today. Okay. Ray Jackson said, please have Art explain that staining a fence makes it easier to fire or to file a hail damage claim. Make it, where did you say that? Please have Art explain that staining a fence makes it easier to file a hail claim. Red rooster fence. Well, certainly, uh, uh, if it's a stained fence, you can see those hail marks. Okay, on, so that's the it. reason, yeah. Yeah, it knocks a little bit of that stain off um, so that they can actually tell if it got damaged or not. Okay, okay. Um, whereas a unstained fence... Uh, you uh, may not be able to see that. You may not be able next. to see that. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that's all I got. So thanks, guys, for watching. So main takeaways, visit with your insurance agent uh, to get to know your policy so you're not surprised down the line. Um, and Art is a great agent here in town. So Art, if people are interested, I'm sure there's some people on here who are insured by you anyways. But so if they're insured by you, what do you recommend they do to set up a meeting, to call in, to maybe evaluate what they have? And then anybody who is maybe interested, how do they get in contact yeah. with you? Well, certainly you can uh, email me at, at art at artsmyagent.com. Okay. And even if I'm not your agent, you can still email me at art at artsmyagent.com. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, it still works. Certainly uh, Google State Farm Burleson and our name will pop up with all our contact information, okay. telephone numbers and emails and, and all that. Uh, and when you call the office, I've got eight licensed professionals that work in my office with me. Okay. Uh, just, uh, you know, they're real good at screening my calls to keep them solicitors away and yeah. the advertisers and, and, and good folks like that. So just uh, tell them, hey, I want to talk to Art about my policy, uh, uh, whether you're with me or not with us. Uh, and uh, if they don't let me talk, if I'm like doing a podcast with Jason or something, just leave me a voicemail and I'll get right back with you. You know, uh, be happy to visit with you. Uh, and if I'm not available, uh, certainly any of my uh, uh, licensed team members um, are also very 
well educated in yep. in the different discounts that you might have coming to you and and analyzing your policy to see just exactly what you have and where your gaps might be perfect you know so okay be well, happy thanks to for do joining. that oh you bet okay. all right enjoy Thanks, this guys. cup of coffee yeah. thank you <laughs> see you later